Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 4401 West Broadway. We have ample parking around the building as well as a parking lot that's located adjacent to the building. Our regular order of service is Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we have Bible study. Afterwards at 11 a.m. we have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. on Sundays we have our Sunday evening worship. We do have midweek Bible study Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and we have classes for all ages. At the Western Church of Christ we also offer a radio program called More Bible Talk. It is broadcasted from WLLV, that's 1240 AM on the radio dial, and 101.9 on the FM dial. The dates and times of the classes are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. We also have a website. It is www.westncoc.com. On this website, you can retrieve lessons brought from the pulpit. Thank you very much. If you would, let us know this page. Uh, I guess 39 will be the song of invitation immediately after the preached word. You can set your, I'll mark your book to page 39 for the song of invitation. Now, if you would, let us turn to page 351. 351, and if it is comfortable for you, please stand. Is a sweet and glorious song that comes to me. I live on, yes, I live on. Jesus saved my soul from death, and now I'm free. I live on, yes, I live on. I live on, yes, I live on, and on through eternity.
<laughs> you turn it back. <laughs> I want y'all to think about that just for a moment. Through eternity. Yeah. A never ending life. Amen. A never ending life. I am so, so, so thankful for brethren such as you. Brother Pierce, I love him dearly. But Pierce mentioned something when I came in, and he said, that's just between me and you. That, that, this greeting is just for you, and you only. But I, I'm, I'm not going to say exactly what he said, but I'm going to read the scripture that I read on this morning from Colossians 1. It says, he is the image of the invisible God, mm -hmm. the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, mm -hmm. visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Jesus is the reason Amen. for all seasons. Amen. I believe, and I again really appreciate Brother Pierce, he, he keeps me on my toes, and as we continue to look and to talk about the only one that could save man from their sin, not by his birth, but by his death. Amen. There are so many that, that proclaim and they are thankful that Jesus was born mm -hmm. and they celebrate his birth and forget why he was born. He was born not to live on this earth forever, but he was born in order to die, to shed his blood on the cross of Calvary so that you and I may be able to live, have that abundant life here upon earth, but much more to live through eternity. And that is what we're looking forward to. That day when we hear our God say, enter in, my good and faithful servant. We're looking forward to that day where we can be around the throne, worshiping him through all eternity. I believe that we have a discussion from time to time about individuals stating, can't wait to get to heaven, to ask God this. Not going to happen. It's not going to be a question and answer session. It's going to be doing what we are practicing doing now. And that is worshiping him around the throne. Not partaking of the Lord's Supper, not giving back a portion of that in which we have received through out there laboring. But worshiping him around the throne throughout all eternity. And we find again here in 1 Peter 1, verse 2, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. The blood of Christ is what we should ever so be thankful for. Amen. For him wanting to please the Father. For him wanting to, to save his people from their sins. Again, many, many things could have took place on that day in which he was led to the cross of Calvary. Many things could have took place on his behalf. 
but he did what the father wanted him to do. Insults were thrown at him. The Bible says, although they reviled against him, he reviled not. We read this morning where they put a crown of thorns upon his head. He didn't shake it off. The soldier pierced him in his side. He didn't take that spear and turn it around and throw it back at him. He suffered. So that we could live. That last thing that we stated this morning in reference to the last words of Jesus when he said, I thirst, and they did not give him water, but they gave him that sour wine. The Bible says that when he tasted it, that he gave up the spirit. He breathed his last breath. It, it is finished. His blood is what we should also be thankful for. And we look again and we talk about Christ is God's perfect sacrifice. Perfect sacrifice now. Again, we, we should again understand what a sacrifice is. A sacrifice is giving up something that you love. You know, God loves us. But he didn't give us up, did he? He gave up his son on our behalf. So that we may be able to live, so that we may be able to understand what truth is all about, so that we may understand how to get to him, so that we may worship him around the throne throughout all of eternity. John 14, 6 states that Jesus here says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. You back up and look at the comforting words that he says to his disciples there in 14.1, where he said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. See, Jesus never want us to be uncomfortable in serving him. Never want us to be worried about where we will spend our eternity. So he tells them that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to him except no one comes to the Father except by him. Again, that perfect sacrifice, that, that blood of Jesus it is what allows our sins to be washed away. In Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11 through 14. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. And again, we looked at this and we talked about this morning that those sins rolled over year after year. It says, but when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, <clears throat> waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. That's you and I. We have been sanctified, Amen. set apart for the work of the Lord. Not, not for our own cause, but for his cause. Jesus came again to do what the Father wanted him to do in order that we may be who the Father want us to be. That perfect sacrifice. Going back to chapter 9 of the book of Hebrews, verse 11. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. 
He entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and of calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing it an eternal redemption. The blood, the blood of the, the goats and the calves and the bulls and the oxen, those things could not save. It said that Jesus didn't enter in by them, but by his own blood. For by the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctified for the purification of the flesh, how much more would the blood of Christ, who, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? dead works. See, there are many people that have tried to do many things and are still trying to do many things thinking that it is going to get them into heaven. It has to be God's way. We have to understand that there are some works that we need to put aside, some works that we need to forget about and do the works in which the Father has sent us to do or called us to do. He sent Jesus to do certain things and Jesus did that. He spoke the word that the Father wanted him to speak. He spoke or uh, speak, and he worked the work that the Father wanted him to work. And we too must look and say, what are we to do Amen. in order to be saved? It's by his blood. And again, we look and we think about there's power in the blood. Yes, Brother Mark will say from time to time that there's nothing special about this water. It is not anything miraculous in that water. But it's in that water where you come in contact with the blood, whether it's the water here or it's the water of the Ohio. If you are going down into that water in order to have your sins washed away, it is that is where you come in contact with the blood. The blood of the Lamb that was slain for you and I. In Ephesians chapter 2, and the verse is 13. Ephesians chapter 2 and the verse is 13. Let's start with verse 11. Therefore, remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hand. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now, there in verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once were afar, afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Yeah. Brought near by the blood of Christ. You were afar off. And you hear me say that from time to time, coming from Acts chapter 2, verse 39, where it says, This promise is for you, to your children, to those that are far off, and as many as the Lord our God shall call. Oh, we should be thankful for what God has done. We should be thankful for the blood that Jesus has, saved, uh, has shed. We should be thankful for the power that the blood still has even today. It washes us. Amen. It makes us to become the people that God wants us to be. So you know, a lot of times we look at this and we think about it. We say, blood, it's, you know, to us, to, to, to the physical eye, to the human eye, blood is red. And, and no one wants anything to be washed in blood. But this blood is an unseen blood. This blood is a blood that cleanses. It, it is not purex. It says that this blood washes us white as snow. And we know how white snow can be. And we should be thankful for the blood that Jesus shed for the sins of the world. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Forgiveness of our trespasses through the riches of his grace. Through his blood. 
Again, what does it do? It washes away our sin. It makes us pure. And we have to continue to keep ourselves pure before God. That, that we can be the person or the people that God wants us to be. <clears throat> you, never, you never hear me say that so that we can be the nation that God wants us to be. Because we will not be. But as individuals, we can be pleasing in the sight of God. Amen. He's not going to judge the United States as the United States. He's going to judge us as individuals. Amen. And each one of us is going to give an account of what we have done. And, and if we have not come in contact with the blood, if we have not stayed in contact with the blood, we will be cast out in the, in the end. So we have to, again, be thankful that the blood has power. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, taking or making peace by the blood of his cross. Verse 21 of Colossians 1. And you who was once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil things, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard and has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now, I want you to understand, being an alien, people look at you funny. Being an alien, you're not welcomed in certain places. Being an alien, you're subject to, to, be, to be swooped up in a way any second now. But here... The Bible says that you who was once alienated and hostile in mind, it, it's because of what, what, what the individual was doing, that they were aliens away from God. And it says that now you're brought near. And we have to ask ourselves, how, how did all of this take place? How, how did we become to be the people that God wants us to be? It's because of the power that the blood has. That we were able to become children of God and to be able to, to worship him and to be called the family of God or children of God. Ever so thankful. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one would scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, and one dare to die, even to die. But God shows his love for us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. Christ died for us. That's what Paul is telling the, the, the church of Rome right here. That that's what we're reading. Christ died for us. Each one of us gave his life in order that we may be able to live. In verse 6 or verse 9. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood. Much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. You know if you're hostile toward God. God is hostile towards you. you, you you've been alienated away from him. Because of the things in which you have contemplated in your minds. But now you have changed those things. God has love for you. He accepts you. He says in verse 10, for we, for, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more. Now we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. By his life. He gave his life in order that we may be saved. He shed his blood in order that we may be washed, purified. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. 
his people were brought back to him, reconciled back to God. Well, we, you know, as being Gentiles, now we have the right to come to him. And as we come to him, we have the, the very same right in which the Jews have, the children of Israel have. That, that we may be part of the family of God and God may continue to watch over us at our coming in and our going out. That he may bless us. Again, it is by his blood that these things are made possible. And, and we need to understand again that Jesus did exactly what the Father wanted him to do. And many times we would think to ourselves, there's no way I would go through that. No way I'm going to continue to be rejected. No way you're going to continue to tell me that I'm, am, I am guilty of something when I haven't did anything. That, that would be us. And we would get mad and we would get upset and we would go in the other direction. But Jesus didn't do those things. He continued to do what the Father wanted him to do. In John chapter 1 and the verse is 7. John chapter 1 and the verse is 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Now, who is John talking to? He's not talking to non-Christians here. He's talking to Christians. He's talking to those that, that have put Christ on through the watery grave, those that have been washed in the blood. He's talking to them, and he's explaining to them that the blood continues to cleanse them daily. It continues to cleanse us daily. We need the blood of Jesus. If you ever give up the blood, you gave up hope. You're giving up all, so we need to hold on to what the Bible says in reference to the blood of our Lord and our Savior and accept it for being true. Because this, again, this is what we're cleansed by. And we're cleansed by the blood in baptism. Yes, I went a step further there to look at that we're cleansed by the blood once we're baptized and if we fall short, we can be washed in the blood. We're still there in the blood. The blood continues to wash us. You ever seen those fountains? That they have water flowing through, they have a pump, and, and that water keeps going and going and going and going and every now and then you gotta put a little bit more water in there because it evaporates or splashes out, or somebody jump in there and splashes it out, but here the blood continues to cleanse us. It never runs out. It has to never be replenished. It's the blood of our Lord and our Savior. It's the blood that washes us. It's the blood that washed them in the first century. It's the blood that washes us here in this century. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Hebrews chapter 10, and the verse is 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from, e from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. You ever dropped some dye in water and you watch it turn color? You, you ever dropped some, some blood in some water? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm just let you in on those, it's not really a secret, but I was at Red Cross when I was in the military and I wanted to give blood and I went in and they, they pricked your finger and they dropped that blood in the water and if your blood goes a little ways down and comes back up, they say, I'm sorry, you're not gonna be able to give blood because you're anemic, okay? You have low iron, I, I got that all fixed, I'm good to go. <laughs> The blood finally dropped in and it went to the water. And it just stayed in its form for a while and then it spread out and, and the water became a little cloudy. But when you look in this water, you don't see any blood. It's not cloudy. But that's where you come in contact with the blood. That, that's where you don't have to worry about being anemic or, or being whatever else the doctors say that you're almost borderline this, borderline diabetic or whatever. The blood cleanses us and makes us whole, not physically, but spiritually. That's what the blood of Jesus does for us. Mm -hmm. So again, we look here. Let's read verse 22 once again. It said, let us, draw, let us hold fast to confession of our faith. Hold fast. 
You know, holding fast means something. It, it means that we, we don't, I went down to verse 23, it means that we don't give up, that we're continuing to, to march forward, continue to do the things that God wants us to do. He says again there, hold fast our confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. He's faithful. What has he promised? That going back to verse 22, that if we draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, that we will have everything that he has said that we would have in his word. And you go back and read the promises of God. And you hold him to those things because he will hold fast to those if we hold fast to him. Mm -hmm. Cleansed in the blood in baptism. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11, you know, from time to time we go and we preach on 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and we talk about those sins there. I don't want to focus on all the sins there, but I want to focus on what they did about their sin. The Bible says they were cleansed. They were washed. You know, we can talk about this man, we can talk about that man, we can talk about their lifestyle, we can talk about how raggedy their life is. But look what the Bible says in reference to the church of Corinth, the people that want to follow after God. It says, and such were some of you, but you were washed and you were sanctified and you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Mm -hmm. You were washed. So being washed in the blood is a good thing. You have a new life now. You're, you're, again, you're set apart to do the work that God has called you to do. And we need to hold fast to that. Again, appreciating what God has done by sending his son to this earth to give his life that we may be washed that we may be able to repent of our sins because we have heard in reference to what we have done to our Lord and our Savior. We, we have rejected him. We have denied him. We, we have said that, no, he could not be the one. Well, the ones that Peter and the other apostles were talking to in Acts chapter 2, they were the ones that, that, that crucified him. They were the ones that, 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 that pierced that spear in his side. They're the ones that put that crown of thorns upon his head. They're the ones that sped upon him. They're the ones that hurled insults at him. And when they heard that God had made him both Lord and Christ, they asked the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? You know, what, what can I do to fix it? You know, a lot of times men don't have that mentality. They, they don't have that mindset when you tell them that they've done something wrong. They're not trying to fix it. They're trying to see how much more wrong they can do. But those on that day, some of them asked the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter says there in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You read further on down in verse 41. It says about 3,000 obeyed on that day. About 3,000. We know that there was much more people there than that. Others continue to obey. We have to know that when we talk about being washed in the blood, there's a lot of people that don't want to give up their lifestyle. They don't want to give up what, they, what they're holding on to. They don't want to give up hope that, that mama, daddy, grandma, grandpa, they're in a better place. They don't want to give up that hope because of the truth of the gospel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The truth that the blood of Jesus is what cleanses us from all sin as we read what Paul was told, or Saul was told in Acts chapter 22, verse 16. As Ananias was preaching the gospel to him or teaching the gospel to him, he says, Saul, why tarries thou? Arise and be baptized, washing away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Cleansed by the blood. And that's what Ananias was telling him. Saul, you need to be cleansed by the blood. You need to be baptized. You need to be added to the body of Christ. That's what I'm telling you on this evening. That if you have not been cleansed by the blood, what are you waiting on? If you're thinking that Jesus came to this earth and that you're saved automatically, you're wrong. 
I, I love that image that, that runs across my Facebook page every now and then. That if you have one of these, you don't have to worry about anybody stealing it and it's talking about a stick shift. See, we need to learn how to drive a stick shift. We need to quit saying that Jesus automatically saves just because he was born. That Jesus automatic, you are automatically saved since Jesus died. No, you're not automatically saved. You have Amen. to do something. Amen. Well, we talked about that this morning. We talk about it at the end of every sermon that I preach. We talk about hearing. We talk about believing. We talk about confessing, repenting, and being baptized. And it doesn't stop there. You have to live faithful. You have to continue to grow. You have to continue to study. We talk about those things. We talk about those things for a reason because those things are of the utmost importance. Amen. That we may hear in the end, enter in, my good and faithful servant, and not those dreadful words, depart from me, you work of iniquity, I know you're not. The blood of our Lord and our Savior. We need it. We need it each and every day. So if you're here and you're not a child of God and you want to become one, that opportunity is yours. To come and to confess that Jesus is the Son of God, to be immersed in the watery grave of baptism, rise and to walk a newness of life. Continue to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now I say that we don't study to win an argument, we don't study to prove a point, but we study to show ourselves approved unto God. Yes, sir. We just don't take man's word for it. We go back and we search it to make sure that it is true. Search it to make sure that the blood cleanses you from all sin. And you will find it to be true. Amen. If you can't find it, then ask someone to help you. As Brother Glenn pointed out this morning in Bible class, how can I understand except some man guide me? We need Jesus. Each and every last one of us yes, need Jesus. Jesus. You know, Amen. a lot of times we tell people that when they're acting up, we say, you need Jesus, but we all need Jesus. That's the truth about it. Amen. Amen. We all need him. Maybe you're here and you're not a Christian, or you are a Christian and you have strayed away. You need to come back to him. You need to confess your faults. You need to ask God to forgive you. If you have to go and ask someone else to forgive you, then come back and ask God to forgive you. Do that before it's too late. If you're here and you're subject we ask you to please come as we stand and sing the invitation hymn. Have thine affections been dealt to his cross? Is thine heart right with God? Does thou count all things for Jesus but most? Is thine heart right with God? Is thine heart right with God? Wars in the crimson flood, cleansed and made holy, humble and lowly, Right in the sight of God above. Has thy dominion no self and no sin? Is thine heart right with God? Over all evil without and within, is thine heart right with God? Is thine heart right with God? Washed in the crimson flood, Lift and made holy, humble and lowly, right in the sight of God, of God. Is there no more condemnation for sin? Is thy heart right with God? Does Jesus rule in the temple within? Is thy heart right with God? Is thy heart right with God? Washed in the crimson blood, cleansed and made holy, humble and lowly, right in the sight of God, of God. All of the parts under Jesus' control, is thy heart right with God? Does he each moment abide in thy soul, is thy heart right with God? Is thine heart right with God? Washed in the crimson flood, cleansed and made holy, humble and lowly, right in the sight of